XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH. Which one should you actually use? To answer this question, I created a simple diagram here. All it's saying is that if you have Excel 2021 or Excel for Microsoft 365, so basically any of the newer versions of Excel, you should be using XLOOKUP in my opinion. And then if you have any of the earlier versions of Excel, then you have a choice. If you're looking up to the right of the value, then I think you should be using VLOOKUP. And then if you're looking up to the left of the value, then I think you should be using index match. Now, don't worry if you don't know these functions now, as obviously in the video, I'm going to go through everything in detail. And hopefully by the end, you'll be an expert on XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP and index match. So let's get to it. Let's start with VLOOKUP because it is the simplest out of these three functions. And it is the one you should be using if you have an Excel version that is pre Excel 2021. So basically anything other than Excel 2021 or Excel for Microsoft 365, then you should be using VLOOKUP to look up to the right of the value. So just to quickly go through the data that we'll be using, we have an orders table with some order IDs, customer names, customer IDs, emails, and the sales amount. And then to the right of this, we have a table where we'll be looking up the email, the sales, the customer name, the order ID based on the customer ID here. So let's quickly get to the function. We can start typing VLOOKUP and Excel will give us recommendations based on what we start typing. You can hit tab to auto populate this function for you. And then Excel will give you the arguments for this function. So we can see that this is the lookup value, the table array, the column index number and the range of the lookup. So let's go through these. So the lookup value is the value that you want to be looking up. In our case, that would be the customer ID. So let's click on customer ID and we select it. So G4. The next one we are going to select is the table array. So where do we actually want to look up this value from? And remember that with VLOOKUP, you can only look up to the right of the value. So in our case, we are going to select this range here, starting from customer ID, going all the way to the bottom of sales and make sure to hit F4 to lock the cells in. So the formula will always look up from this range. And next one is the column index number, which essentially is just asking you from this range here, which column do you want to return the values from? So customer ID would be column number one, email would be column number two, and then sales would be column number three. So because we want the email, that's column number two, and then moving on, do we want an approximate match or do we want an exact match? So I want an exact match. So I'll type in false and then I'm going to hit enter. And then here we go. We can see that we got the email address back T Benedict Tovich MV at eBay.com. We can quickly double check this value here. So I can see that this value is here. The customer ID tag to it is 538643601. FG and 538643601 FG. So it's the same values. You can auto populate this function by double clicking at the right bottom here. When you see this little cross appear, you can double click and it'll auto populate the function for you. Or, and I am going to hit Control Z now to undo, or you can grab it and drag it down, which will also do the same. And I am going to hit Control Z again. Or you can hold down shift, press down arrow all the way you get to the bottom, and then you press control and D for down. And this will also auto populate the function for you. So numerous ways, just pick whichever one you feel comfortable with. Moving on to sales, we're going to be doing the exact same thing, but not with email with sales. So let's start typing the VLOOKUP function. We can hit tab to auto populate. What's the value we want to be looking up again? This is the customer ID. So let's hit G4, the cell, and then table array remains exactly the same. So starting with customer ID column all the way to sales, the bottom of the sales, make sure to press F4 to lock in the table array and then moving on to the column index number. So if email was called number two, then sales must be column number three. And here we go. And the range of the lookup again, we want an exact match. So I'm going to pass in false and hit enter. And there we go. We got the sales amount back and we can just auto populate the function here. And here we go. We have it. So next one up is customer name. And this is where VLOOKUP has its limitations as it can only look up the values to the right from the customer ID. So in this table here, Based on customer ID, using VLOOKUP, we can look up email and sales, but we cannot look up order ID or customer name. And let me show you. Let's start typing VLOOKUP 
the lookup value again is the same. The table array this time say I am going to select everything from order ID to the bottom of customer ID. Hit F4 to lock the cells in and then column index number. So if customer ID was column number one, if we count backwards, customer name must be column number zero and order ID must be column negative one. I mean, this is incorrect, but let's just do it. So I am going to pass in zero for the column index number that we want to retrieve because we want the customer name. And then again, I want an exact match, so I'll pass it false and hit enter. We can quickly see that this didn't work. We can, of course, try the same with order ID. So let's just pass in the customer ID again for the lookup value. Table array, select the exact same thing. Hit F4 to lock in the cells. And for the column index number this time, we'll choose negative one to be consistent. And then I want an exact match. So pass in false, hit enter again. And here we go. We can see that this didn't work again. So that's where VLOOKUP has its limitations. As you can see, it can only look up values to the right. So email and sales worked, but customer name and order ID didn't. This is where index match will come in handy. So just to go through the use case of index match, essentially, if you're looking up values to the left and you have a version of Excel that is pre Excel 2021 or Excel for Microsoft 365, then I think you should be using index match. It is a little bit more complicated than VLOOKUP, but let's jump into it. So index match, the function index match is a combination of obviously two functions, index and match. To understand how these work together, let's first uh, go through match. Match essentially just returns a number for you, so it'll match whatever you want to within a certain row or a certain column. And I know this doesn't make too much sense now, but as we go through the example, I promise you it will. So first of all, uh, what we want to get back is, say, for example, the email for this customer ID. Now, in order to do this, we need to know within this table which row this customer ID is in and uh, which column the email can be found. So essentially, we want to find this field here, which is in row one, two, three. And then we want to find email, which is in column one, two, three, four. So that's all we're doing here with the index match function. We just want to select something, the value that is in row three here and column four. I'm just going to start typing away on the bottom here. So let me just copy the customer ID with control C and control B down here. And let me also copy the email down here just for demonstration purposes. So let's first match the row number of this customer ID here. So in order to do that, we start typing the function match and we can hit tab for Excel to auto populate the function for us. And then here we go. We have the arguments lookup value lookup array and match type. Lookup value, pretty obvious, the customer ID. Lookup array would be the entire customer ID column. Here we go. And the match type, we get less than exact or greater than. We want an exact match. Hit enter. And there we go. We got back row number three, which makes sense because if you look here, this is in row one, two and three. Now we go with email. So let's match this. Which column is email in? Um, Let's see the match function again. Same arguments here. So we have a lookup value, lookup array and match type. So what are we looking up? Email. Where are we looking this up from? Up here, these columns. So from the single row at the top here. And what is the match type? Again, we want an exact match. So here we go. You see it here. We want an exact match. So I'll type in zero. And we see we got two numbers back. So we got row three and column number four. So now we have everything to use the index function. So let me just type the index function down here at the bottom. Again, index, we start typing. You can hit tab to auto populate. And let's just look at the arguments quickly. So we have array, row number, and column number. Now, what's great is that we already have the row number here, three. We already have the column number, four. So all we have to pass in now is the array. And the array will just be the whole table. So select everything from order ID all the way to the bottom of uh, sales. And then we can pass in the row number, which is three. And then we can pass in the column number from up here, which is uh, four. These numbers here. And here we go. We can close the brackets and hit enter. Now you see here the value that we got back is T Benedictovich 
mv at the ebay.com, which let's just double check for this customer ID here. Yes, that is correct. You see here, essentially, this is the same value that we got back using VLOOKUP here, just using index math. So it is a different way and it is a bit more complicated as you can see. But the good thing about it is that it is more dynamic in the sense that you can look up to the right, to the left, and obviously you can look up dynamically whatever you want. So you could look up the customer ID and then the emails, the sales. You can change these values. So say, for example, if I change this one, let's say to sales, this email here, I can change it to sales. And then this changes to a five here. So then if we go into the formula, we can change this at the top here where my mouse is hovering to five. And then I get back the sales. And this is where index match is really powerful. You can use it dynamically. And I am going to show you how by populating this portion of the table here using only one formula. Let's start by typing the index function. You can hit tab to auto populate. It will ask you to select the array first. So let's select the whole orders table, everything from the order ID to the bottom of the sales as the array. Hit F4 to lock in the reference cells. Now moving on to row number, and this is where we'll actually use match to return a dynamic row number for us, so we don't have to hard code it. So start typing match, you can hit tab to auto populate the value for you. And then uh, here we go, we're presented again with the same arguments, lookup value, lookup array, and match type. So what is the lookup value? Well, again, the lookup value would be the customer ID. And here I am going to press F4 once, I am going to press F4 twice and I am going to press F4 one more time. We end up with this $G4. Dollar essentially just locks in that column for us. So as we drag the formula to the right, this G column will not move. It'll just stay locked to G4 as we drag uh, this formula across, which will be very helpful when we wanna make this formula dynamic, and it'll help us in writing only one formula to populate this whole table. Now moving on to the lookup array, which will be customer ID column. So select the whole customer ID column. Again, press F4 only once here because you want to lock in the whole column. This is where you'll be looking up the customer IDs from all the times. And then for match type here, you can uh, go exact match, which is what I'll do. This is the row number. So now moving on to the column number, let's start typing another match function. You can hit tab to auto populate. And then what is the value we're looking up now? So now the value we're looking up is the email value and you can hit F4 once and then you can hit F4 twice. And this is where you stop. So you end up with this H$3. H$3 just means that it'll lock in row three for you. Why is that good? As you drag down the formula, it'll stay here, this cell in H$3. So rather than going to H4, because of the dollar, it'll stay in H3 as you drag down the formula. So let's look up the lookup array. The lookup array for this will uh, just be the first row here. So starting from order ID all the way to sales. And you lock this in because you'll always be looking up the values from here. And then the match type is exact match. So you type in a zero then close the bracket here, and then obviously close the other bracket as well, and hit enter. And there we go, we got the email back for this customer ID. Now why is this formula so good? Why is index match good? Well, because if I drag this formula now to the right, there you go. You can see that it looked up the email, then it looked up the sales, then it looked up the customer name, which is to the left of the lookup value, and then it looked up the order ID. So here we go. This is where index match is really powerful. Let's just look at this line here and let's locate it in the orders table. It would be row five. Tess Benediktovich with this customer ID that we just looked up with the email address that we just returned. And the sales amount is 47.55. Let's just double check 47.55 here as well. And that is why index match is really powerful. We can just use this dynamically. So if I select all of these cells now, and I go to the right bottom here, double click. I essentially populated this whole table with just one single formula that I wrote in cell H4. And the formula is here. Let's just look through it again. We had index, and then within the index, we select the table array. Then within that, we have the first match function here, which will return the row number for whatever customer ID you have here. And then you have the second match function which will return the column number 
for whatever you want to look up. So essentially just your column titles here. So just to show you that it is dynamic, say, for example, I change this here to sales, then you see these two columns here, they're exactly the same. And I am going to press Control Z to undo, but I could change this to customer name. And there we go. These two columns now are exactly the same. And that's why index match, again, really powerful. It's dynamic, so it can look up to the right, to the left. If you know index match, you know one of the bread and butter things that Excel has to offer, which is not a bad thing, I guess. And last but not least, XLOOKUP. You should be using this one if you have Excel 2021 or later. So if you have Excel 2021 or Excel for Microsoft 365, I think you should just use XLOOKUP because it's that easy to use. It's a lot simpler than index match. It can look up to the left and to the right. Let's go into email here, start typing the function. Again, we can hit tab to auto populate and let's check the arguments quickly. So we have the lookup value, the lookup array, the return array, and then we have an if not found field, which is optional, match mode again, optional, and then you have the search mode, which is again, optional. So what are we doing here? Again, we're looking up the email for this customer ID. So let's look up this customer ID. The lookup array, you can just select the customer ID column. This is where you'll be looking up the value from. Hit F4 to lock in the cells. The return array is where you want to be looking up the values from. So this would be the email column selected and then hit F4. Now, the if not found is just an optional argument. We can leave it blank for now for the purposes of uh, this video and the match mode, we want an exact match. So I think uh, it defaults to zero anyway, but I'll just uh, type it in. And for search mode, we're not gonna be bothered about that for now. We'll just pass it in, close the brackets. And here we go. We have the email returned for this customer ID and let's just make sure that it is the right email. Um, yeah, let's just, uh, let me just type in email here again. Yes, the Benediktovich mb at ebay.com. I feel like I memorized this by heart by now. So here we go. We have this function populated for us. Again, you can double click or you can drag it down to auto populate the function for you. Now moving on to the next one, sales. Rather, actually, I'll just show you one example where we look up to the left rather than looking up to the right. So we'll find, say, for example, the order ID that belongs to this customer ID here. Let's go into the order ID column here, start typing our function X lookup and then hit tab and uh, we'll look up the customer ID. The lookup array again is the customer ID column. There we go. Hit F4 to lock in the value. The return array this time will be the order ID column. So we're looking up to the left. Hit F4 to lock in the cells. If not found, we'll leave it a uh, blank. And then match mode, just to show you that if we don't pass in anything, it'll actually just default to zero. The exact match, I'll leave it blank. Close the brackets and hit enter. And here we go. We got the order ID back for this customer ID. So let's just double check ABK and it ends in 531. So let's double check here. We have ABK 531 and uh, it's definitely this customer ID because I can see that it's the D Benediktovich MB at ebay.com email here. For the purposes of uh, completeness, let's just come here and drag this down. And here we go. We have the order ID populated as well. So you can see that we used the uh, XLOOKUP here to look up to the right when we looked up email. So you can see it here that customer ID is here. Email is to the right of customer ID. But then at the same time, when we looked up the order ID column here, we actually looked up to the left of customer ID. So we can see that customer ID is here and order ID is here to the left of customer ID. So XLOOKUP really just provides you an easy way to look up to the left and to the right. but it only works on Excel 2021 or Excel for Microsoft 365. If you like this video and you would like to see more content like this, then a sub to my channel would be great. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.